Welcome back to It Resolves, where we play a new deck every single day. Today's deck is Esper Vehicles. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I hope you guys are doing well. Uh, a couple things I want to mention before we jump into today's deck. First and foremost, if you happen to be pre-releasing this weekend, first of all, be safe. Have a great time. Uh, hopefully you learned something new about the set that maybe you didn't know before. Hopefully you find some new cards that you're really excited about, some new strategies. I think it's going to be a really, really good set. Uh, and so I encourage everybody who can get out there, have some fun, maybe bring a friend, have a blast. Uh, it, it really is. This is a this is a big set in my opinion. Uh, and so uh, retelling this story of the Brothers War is really a pivotal thing because that was such a ground foundational ground piece of what magic is today. Uh, and so to revisit that now is really awesome. So. Best of luck to you guys. Do feel free to share your stories, what kinds of decks you build, those kinds of things with us in the comment section. I'd love to see what you guys have, a, have in store or have created as you have gone along. Uh, but today we are jumping into Esper Vehicles. Now this is the deck that we ran a uh, MTG and Chill video on yesterday. So uh, if you missed that, go check that out. That was kind of the practice round, just kind of getting our head around the way that this deck functions. Um, there are a couple things that I wanted to note and actually talked about them in the very beginning of that uh, video because I felt like it was actually very important. First and foremost, this is a very, very all-in strategy. As you can tell, we have absolutely no removal. We are not focused on what the opponent is doing at all. This is a goldfish deck for the most part. Uh, and so for us, the game plan is pretty simple. We're trying to get Grease Fang down, having used either Faithful Mending or Tainted Indulgence to get one of our big uh, vehicles into the graveyard. Get it out there with that Grease Fang ability, get in for the attack very quickly, and then basically just repeat that process as much as possible. Uh, eventually, of course, we do plan to actually just play out those vehicles on top of pulling one from the graveyard. And as you can see in that MTG and Chill video, that's not all that difficult for us to do. Uh, one thing I want to mention, and I, again, I mentioned it at the beginning, this deck is fairly all in on like one creature getting in for the attack. In particular, the biggest one here is the Futurist Sentinel, which is just a big old 6-6, six, six. like that's it. Uh, but what we can do with Prodigy's prototype is actually start to go a little bit wider uh, thanks to whenever one or more vehicles attack, you create a 1-1 one, one pilot creature token. So if we could start, you know, throwing a couple of these down onto the field, even if this doesn't attack, as long as a vehicle is attacking, we're going to get this trigger, which just means that A, we get more creatures, and then B, we can crew more vehicles next turn to hopefully finish off the game a lot sooner. We actually saw this work really, really well uh, in game number three in the MTG and Chill video, where we were able to really spread out versus a... Uh, uh, Sanctum, the big angel, 5-5 five, five angel. Uh, and so it worked very, very well. Uh, we do have a single Tezzeret in here as well. This isn't something that we're really focused on trying to do. However, it is actually a really good enabler for the deck. That plus one, being able to draw two and discard two unless you discard an artifact. Well, that's perfect for us. We want to discard an artifact. It's the exact same as Thirst for Knowledge. Uh, we can also use that minus two just to get in there, create a big 6-6 six, six, or give any of our other you know little guys for basically make them an attacking creature right away, uh, which is great. And then that minus six, of course, you get an emblem with whenever an artifact you control becomes tapped, you draw a card. Well, a lot of our deck is vehicles. So uh, naturally, <clears throat> this is a very good option for us. We do also have the hotshot mechanic as just a way to crew these vehicles early on. So if we don't have the Grease Fang, this is kind of the backup plan. It's also our only turn one play. So it's kind of nice to be able to simultaneously run both plans without necessarily having to overthink it. Uh, and then the the can't stay away may seem like a bit of an odd call, uh, but for us it's actually quite good because either it pulls back a hot shot mechanic or more importantly it pulls back a grease fang. So if the opponent sweeps or something along those lines, we're able to bring those cards back and we can flash that back if we need to as well uh, and allow ourselves the opportunity to replay exactly the same strategy that we've been trying to play. Uh, the mind link mech nice little flyer here this is going to hopefully get in above any ground decks 
the Prodigy's prototype, obviously the go-wide, and then that Futurist Sentinel, Sentinel that big 6-6 six, six threat that they kind of feel they have to block. So that's kind of the spread here. Uh, again, this is a very all-in strategy, very all-in deck, but I think it's pretty good. We, we did okay with it yesterday, so I'm kind of curious to see how we do today. We can talk through some of the plays as we go. Let's go ahead and jump into that now. All right, guys, and here we are for game number one. Uh, yeah, this actually is a keep based on the Tainted Indulgence. We don't have a white source, so that definitely is not great. But uh, we do get to see a few extra cards here with this, and as long as we do have a white source in here, we should be good. Uh, and there it is, so that's perfect. Let's go ahead and we can just Tainted Indulgence now. Technically, it's, it's worth probably waiting. Uh, they could have like a Spell Pierce here or something like that. Uh, but it looks like they don't so we'll just go ahead and discard that and now we are fairly well set up for grease fang i think that's kind of the appeal of this deck by the way guys is just the the like ease of kind of getting things set up here and again so in this case we can kind of safely go for the grease fang knowing they probably have a counter and we have the can't stay away uh it kind of just solves the problem for us you know what i mean like it's fine. Uh, so here we are going to be able to pull back the prototype. Whether or not it sticks around, we'll see. Nice. Uh, these do come in with haste, so the the ability here to just be able to get in there, start swinging immediately, is also very very nice. I'm assuming they've got something to do here. It's mono blue. It looks like so. They're gonna let us attack, which does mean regardless of what happens, we get the little one one. Uh, which is a big deal for us. Let me be very clear. That's very important. All right. Uh, let's see what they do. Uh, the the benefit of playing a deck like this, by the way, guys, is um, it's not tier one. So I know this week was definitely meta week for the most part. Really? Okay, sure. This deck was, or, or uh, this week was very focused on meta game stuff. So we did a couple meta decks, like tier one decks, things like that. This obviously isn't. Uh, the point of this deck, though, is that it's a bit surprising to some people. Not everybody, of course, but some people just haven't seen the Grease Fang combo, at least not in standard. Now, in other formats, like Historic, the ceiling's a lot higher for the deck because the card pool's a lot higher for the deck, right? Like, there's a lot more powerful things you can do with the Grease Fang combo. Uh, unfortunately, we can't do that, obviously, here, but we still get some really good plays, of course, so... Uh, oh, <laughs> oh, we did it. <laughs> All right, uh, cool. Let's move on to game two. It's exactly how we drew it up. What's up guys, before we jump into the next game, I just want to remind you that we send out altars every single month to participating Patreon members. Now, please don't feel pressured, of course, but if you are interested in supporting the channel and picking up some awesome altars every single month, you can check out all the details over on our Patreon page at patreon.com slash it resolves. This month, to honor some of the most impactful lands we have ever seen in Magic, we have got the Urza Legendary Land Cycle, including Sarah's Sanctum, Talarian Academy, Phyrexian Tower, and Gaia's Cradle. If you're interested in picking these up, they will be available through the month of November and will be sent to you at the end of the month. As always, guys, we really appreciate the support, and thank you so much for watching the videos. I hope you all enjoy the gameplay. All right, guys, here we are for our next game, and, uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh like it can't be a keep right i think we have to mulligan that uh that was that was a little silly <laughs> uh it's actually not that bad right like there were there were some good things about that but uh i don't think we can keep that um so we'll keep this this will allow us to pull an extra land with the tainted indulgence most likely <clears throat> or we just draw it um <coughs> Excuse me, guys. Uh, and let's be technically correct. We'll wait till the end of their turn to Tainted Indulgence here. Okay. Uh, interesting. All right. So we know that they don't have any other plays. We'll go ahead and do this. Uh, let's get the Futurist Sentinel. Yeah, the Sentinel definitely is the right play, I think, there. Uh, we'll go here. And I'm actually just going to drop the prototype here. So the reason being, um, again, this just needs to be sitting on our field for this ability to actually take place. 
Uh, and that's really good. We also just have a Tezzeret coming down next turn. Um, so there is a world where we just start to activate this and get in there for some damage. <clears throat> Which I think will be the play. Um, I really do like Tezzeret just in general. Now chances are here, of course, he's probably not going to stick around. But uh, this does allow us the opportunity to just get in for uh, a little bit of damage here, which is nice. Generally, um, if we have a slow start, which we have had a bit of a slow start this time, uh, we do have a hard time racing these Selesnya enchantment lists. That's just my experience. Um, however, what's so nice about this is because you can sneak out damage. So what I mean by that is you can literally like get six damage with a Grease Fang. You know what I mean? Like that's a pretty fun way to just go for uh, go for the win. So there are ways we can certainly sneak out a win. Not saying it's going to happen, but it's a possibility. I do assume they attack both at Tezzera, right? Yeah. So we just let Tez go down. Obviously can't do too much about that. That's fine. Okay. Hmm. Um. I think we tainted Indulgence first. Wow, we did not hit much of anything did we um that sucked oh no uh i mean we'll attack for one we're not gonna block with this little guy unfortunately so we're i i expected to hit a land there if we had hit a land we would have been able to either prodigy's prototype or more likely uh probably thirst for knowledge um but yeah this that was a bad bad hit unfortunately uh, yep. Definitely got us there. Okay, we did get a Grease Fang. Um, so we go for the Grease Fang. We pull the Sentinel. Uh, we can crew it up with this little guy, which I think is probably the better call because we can trade off the Grease Fang if need be. Um, don't particularly want to do that, but this is what I mean by we're kind of a sneaky deck. Like, we just immediately get six damage, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, and because we have so much discard with Thirst for Knowledge right now, uh, but also the Tainted Indulgences, the uh, the Faithful Mendings, things like that, like we have ways we can get that future, future Sentinel in the graveyard and just repeat that process. Uh, and so now they have to be very concerned about a random six damage coming through, right? Like. Um, now, if we, if they attack and we block with Grease Fang, or if they just have like a borrowed time, that would do it too. Uh, but we'll see. Okay. Wow, that's very good. That's very very good. Okay. Uh, yeah. Scary, extraordinarily scary. Uh, do we let eight damage come through? Uh, no. Uh, what's nice here, by the way, is we have the can't stay away, um, and now we actually, awesome. Okay, so let's make sure we do this properly. Let's thirst for knowledge. Let's put you in the graveyard. Let's can't stay away. Pull a grease fang. Now we have a backup grease fang as well, which is kind of nice. Um, I'm actually wondering what the right call is here. Uh, so the reason I'm attack oh man, we tapped the Grease Fang. That was a bit of a mistake. Um, the reason I'm attacking here is they can't block it, uh, which I think is actually more important. Might be wrong. Uh, what we should have done is saved the uh, the Grease Fang for blocking, but this has Trample now, so <laughs> there's there's very little we are going to be able to do here. So this is gonna get a lot of. Buff. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go ahead and concede here. Unfortunately, uh, just yeah, they're gonna double up with the Weaver too. That was a good game on the opponent's part. We I don't think stood a chance when we missed that land drop. We kind of shot ourselves in the foot there. So that's fine. Let's move on to game three. All right, guys, here we are for game number three. Uh, yeah, we'll keep this. A little bit of an odd one for sure. Uh, looks like mono red potentially. I'm actually gonna lead with the deserted beach. This allows us the faithful mending, tainted indulgence. We've got the hot shot mechanic. We've got some good options here. Um, so what is the correct play? We definitely play the black source. 
Um, there's two schools of thought here. One, we can hotshot mechanic to trade, which is kind of unlikely. Alternatively, we could just tainted indulgence. I think that's probably going to be the play, honestly. We do have that faithful mending. Technically, we could have played that instead just to gain a couple points of life, but I think this is okay, especially given we don't have more than one card that we actually want to get rid of. So let's go ahead and do this. All right, we'll get rid of you. Uh, not a great hit for sure. Okay. Uh, let's do... Let's do this. Hmm, bit of an odd circumstance, right? So we don't have a Grease Fang. Um, it's kind of a silly way to go, but I think we just dro double drop Hotshot mechanics. There's a bit of the hedge play because now at the very least, we're gonna require them to have some burn spells or something. Yeah, so. This just means that these two can't block. These firebrands are so good. This is a, a absolutely gorgeous start from uh, from the mono red deck here. So, uh, oh man, and we are just getting very bad draws. This is insane. Uh, okay, well, we lost. <laughs> yeah, we lost, that's fine. Quick game, let's jump into a game four. All right, guys, here we are for game number four. Uh, I'm gonna keep it on the basis that we've got some early plays, but I doubt this is a great hand, honestly. Double Grease Fang is really terrible. Um, as we can see, <laughs> uh, because we are so all in on this strategy, uh, th when we get behind, we stay behind for the most part. It's pretty difficult for us to kind of garner our way back into a game. Uh, and so while we can sneak out some wins, it's not necessarily great for us if the opponent just has like a wide board or something like that. So just be aware that uh, if you happen to, you know, take this list and give it a shot or, you know, do whatever you'd like to do with it, which feel free, it's a, it'll be down below. It's a fun list. Um, it definitely needs some tooling out. Uh, removal <laughs> would be a strategy you, you should consider, right? Uh, but that's fine. All right. Yep. Can't stay away. Uh, okay, so we just drop Grease Fang and then pass, basically. Uh, we don't have a whole lot going for us at the moment. We haven't drawn into any of our vehicles. We haven't drawn into any of our, like, draw and discard stuff. We do have a Tezzeret that can come down next turn. Um, but that's about it. Uh, Tezzeret does help, obviously. I mean, we get to draw a few cards and potentially get a vehicle into the graveyard. Uh, so there is a world where that's actually pretty beneficial for us, but we just haven't really made that happen yet. It's a reservoir deck. Interesting. Hmm. Okay, uh, we do need to play the blue source here, so let's do this. Let's Tezzeret. We will draw two and then discard two. Or excuse me, discard one. Uh, yeah, that's pretty solid. Um, we'll crew it up with the two one, obviously, and then we'll get a, a relatively solid attack in here. Uh, six damage is pretty good. I'm assuming they might just block with like the Epicure or something. They might also just take six. like. They're not in a position where they have to block, but six damage is a chunk. Uh, and so at the very least, we're gonna start chipping away, right? Um, we also have a backup Grease Fang, which is kind of nice. So that what that means for us is, well, one, we actually have Can't Stay Away and backup Grease Fang, but more importantly, we actually have the opportunity to block as we see fit here. Um, even if they, they kill something, it's not the end of the world. So let's get rid of the tutu. <clears throat> I don't particularly want them copying that, although my my hunch is that they're gonna go for the Thermo Alchemist, not the, uh, the, the goblin anyway. But this will probably bait out a burn spell on the Grease Fang. No, okay. Sure. They've got a few of these little guys. Very good. Um, 
Let's drop you. Uh, so there's two schools of thought here, right? We could just plus up and then drop this. Alternatively, we could drop this and then minus. Either one seems pretty reasonable, honestly. Uh, what's the least mana intensive? Um, I think we're probably going to end up losing the Tez here at some point. So with that in mind, I am going to go this route. Um, this just gives us a nice little 6-6, six, six, honestly. <laughs> um, do we attack in is the question. I actually think we do. Um, this seems a bit aggressive, I understand, uh, and that's fine. I don't particularly care. I want them to be able to, or to not be able to proactively kill things, and they're out of mana at the moment. So if they wanted to block, they would have to find a way to double block or triple block or something like that to, to kill. So, awesome. All right, we'll see. Tez is going to leave a big 6-6 six, six behind, which is pretty reasonable. <laughs> Another benefit here of getting the 6-6 six, six down, we know they have burned down the house. Uh, and so getting something down that actually gets out from under the uh, five damage there is pretty reasonable. Uh, sure, that's fine. All right, so we are incentivized to block with the hotshot mechanic for sure, uh, because they will be able to just straight up kill it regardless. Um, and I think at this point, we are just in the camp of let's get as much off the field as we can get off the field uh, to, to make this process a little bit easier for ourselves. So let's make sure we're killing the, uh, the tokens that are not copied uh, just to ensure that we actually get them off of the field and leave them with a lot less. Uh, they still will get to kill Tez, which is fine. Um, they'll probably deal a damage to us as well, yeah. Um... And if they have five points of burn, it's fine because we have Grease Fang. <laughs> um, no matter what, we will be able to get Grease Fang down. All right. They hit us for one. Uh, that's fine, like I said. Ooh, that's not a bad draw, actually. Um, yeah, I actually really like that draw. Uh, so what this allows us to do is again get extra little one ones here now that may not seem like a lot but when we're trying to save ourselves from a lot of damage that's pretty reasonable um do we attack with both i think we do uh again we're incentivizing them to kill their own creatures right like we want them to block uh as best they can um which is fine <laughs> They all, they will be able to just straight up kill the 1-1, one, one, which is fine. I'm a little surprised they don't go for the Grease Fang kill, like use the Goblin token to, to block here, and then ping with the Devil token, then they don't have to kill the Epic here, but it's fine too. We'll see what they ping. I'm assuming it's the 1-1, one, one, but you never know. <laughs> yep. That's fine. I'm not going to crew up a vehicle either, by the way. There's not really a huge reason to. Um, they were out of mana. Uh, we were past the attack step, so there really wasn't a need to. Um, normally, you know, you would try and get some amount of added value out of that, but we were not there. Oh, that's very good. Uh, yeah, that's sick. I don't think that win... Well, maybe. They're also just... They don't have the mana, right? So they've got five they can get six if they've got a land they might have it but it's still just one creature versus a a flyer a six six yeah i think we'd be okay kind of surprised they discarded a braid <laughs> a braid seems pretty good <laughs> i'm not gonna lie um all right they're gonna get in for four here uh grab a couple treasure tokens that does give them uh actually no excuse me it does not because they had to tap one uh, that's fine. I think they've had quite a bad draw, uh, potentially, which is fine by me. I'll take it. Uh, we haven't been doing great, so I will definitely take it. Um, all right. Land is less exciting, but what we will do is, uh, kind of proactively utilize this to get in for some damage here. 
seems perfectly reasonable. Um, and we're just going to essentially attack all. Let's do this. We don't have another one in our graveyard. That's fine. So I think we maximize by just attacking with these three, right? Like, we don't need to crew this. I'm quite positive they will have a way of killing this. They did have a land. Hmm. Maybe they played one and I just missed it. That's fine. All right, sick. Uh, let's get the attack in. Um, they certainly can live this, obviously, if that wasn't clear. They just block the 6-6. Six, six. So, like, there is no reason they should not get another turn here. But uh, the having the flyer is actually really important for us, no knowing that they've got the Seize of the Storm. Uh, so, we'll see what they do. Uh, they're also out of Devil Tokens, which is actually very relevant. So, that's fine. Um, yeah, that's certainly annoying, um, but I don't think that's the end of the world, right? Part of me also just wants to play the other Grease Fang just to leave up, like, we kill this one for sure, but that gives us a blocker. All right, so the Thermo Alchemist is going down, which is great. Um, yeah, let's, let's do this. This might seem a little bit odd. Um, but against a mono red opponent where they definitely have the opportunity to attack in, um, I'd like to give them as minimal a window as possible. And so having an untapped Grease Fang is actually really important because it outclasses all of their two twos. Um, and we know they might just go for the giant seize the storm play, which is like a really good play, obviously, but um, I don't know if it'll be enough. So we definitely just double block here. We also, speaking of this, by the way, we also have the backup plan of the can't stay away. So like, even if they kill Grease Fang here, it doesn't matter. We've got a Grease Fang. Uh, and that's kind of the benefit of running the can't stay away in the deck for the record, because I know that does seem a bit of an odd play, uh, but I'm telling you, it makes a lot of sense in these scenarios. Um, it would also make a lot of sense just to be able to kill their stuff though. So I'm just gonna throw that out there as well. Um, but I am, I mean, again, this was a very all-in build from, from the start. We knew it was going to be. Uh, the idea was to put this as all-in as possible. Wow. <laughs> they deal exactly seven. Uh, that was great. That was really good. Uh, well done, opponent. That was funny. Points to them for lighting up the stage. That was lovely. That wasn't light up the stage, was it? That's fine, light up the night. All right, let's talk about this deck. <laughs> All right, guys, so again, the obvious issue, no removal, right? We knew that going in. Uh, I'm not gonna harp on that anymore. I think if you do take this deck and try and run with it, just throw some removal in there. Maybe pick and choose a couple, like take out maybe one hotshot mechanic, maybe a can't stay away, those kinds of things. Uh, any dependent cards like can't stay away are like easy cuts for not necessarily getting rid of, but trimming down on because you do need another card in the graveyard to even function with that card. So it's worth noting, you probably don't need the full four there. You can, you can throw some removal in, I would think. Uh, all that to say, this deck is really fun. This isn't a new deck, right? Like we have seen Grease Fang combo before. We see it a lot in uh, Historic in particular and some of those more, I'll say Eternal formats, but more uh, like larger card pool formats uh, because you have so many big vehicles that you can reanimate, things like Parhelion and stuff like that, which are like game ending cards on the turn they come down. So there's a lot of really powerful things you can do with Grease Fang. I thought it'd be fun to try and see if we can make it work in standard, and I think it did okay. It's not great, obviously, um, but I think with some tooling, it could get there. Uh, will this pan out and will it be good in the Brothers War uh, standard? I'm not sure. Uh, obviously, we get a lot of or, or excuse me, we get a lot of artifacts. I don't know the full set yet. I haven't done my homework quite yet, and so I don't know what all artifacts, vehicles, things like that we're going to be able to get. I'm excited to see though, uh, because I do think Grease Fang is just a really sick card. It's one of my favorites from uh, Kamigawa. It's just so so good. So uh, highly encourage you to check this out. Maybe see where it goes with the Brothers War. But for now, guys, I'm going to get out of here. Best of luck to you all during the pre-release. Don't forget, we also have a draft booster box 
giveaway going on right now until the 22nd of this month. Uh, subscribing is one way to enter, but we've got a couple. Go check out the video on our landing page. We'd really, really appreciate it. And again, have a good weekend, guys. I'll see you guys very soon with some hopefully box opening videos. That's kind of what we're looking at tomorrow. So just a heads up.